share with you at the very beginning of our celebration today, this is a big deal. It's a big deal for Tom Cadlick, but it's a big deal for all of us because it continues to give us the hope and the assurance and the reassurance and the consolation that God continues to call people like your patron, Andrew the Apostle, to serve him. And so uh, on this occasion, the church has a very beautiful reflection, and I'm going to ask you in a few minutes to listen carefully to those words. But before I, I share those words on behalf of the church, I have a couple of thoughts of my own. And especially I want to direct those to you, Tom. You know, I think back that you came to us in the middle of the year, January of 2017. You know, the year was already half over. But through the wisdom of the Precy Formation Board and the faculty, they thought it was a good risk to have you come in. And it didn't take very long for people uh, to know, especially your brother seminarians, to uh, know something of your personality. You came on strong. Uh, you came on loving. Uh, you came on as if you had been a part of the community for more than just days. And the fact that you're here today says that uh, you've done a pretty good job at responding to the pre formation program. First at, at St. Paul Seminary, but then uh, as you moved on to St. Vincent. And you have, uh, by all measures, fully embraced that very important priority. But there's a second priority that I'm not exactly sure I know where you are. You know, because, because of your Boston background, unfortunately, your first priority has been with the New England Patriots. <laughs> and uh, we keep on chipping away at all of that, but uh, just know that won't stand in the way of your moving forward. You know, in a certain way, this is a beautiful day for you to be admitted into candidacy because it is Good Shepherd Sunday. And as we have had a chance to listen to Jesus' own words today, there are three important things that Jesus speaks about himself that certainly applies to all of us as Christians, but specifically on this day applies to you directly. First of all, Jesus speaks about himself as the good shepherd who's willing to lay down his life for us. And his words were packed with meaning, but especially with action. And it was just a couple of weeks ago that we celebrated exactly what Jesus did to fulfill that promise. You know, how he suffered, how he died on the hill of Calvary, and how he rose again, not simply for himself, but for all of us. The second thing that Jesus speaks about as a shepherd is that he knows his sheep in and out. He can look into our hearts and see exactly where we are and hope that we can look into his heart and see the love that he has for us there. And finally, as Jesus talks about himself as a good shepherd, he literally says there isn't anybody that can be left out of his, the heart of his love. That he's going to do his very best to search out those people who maybe have turned their backs on him or those who haven't come to know him yet. So he sees everybody in the world as his sheep. And so, you know, uh, those three points are ones that um, have convinced the Priestly Formation Board and myself to admit you into candidacy today. Because for nearly a year, you have been serving the people here at St. Andrew the Apostle Parish. And I've heard over the course of these weeks, certainly from you, but clearly from lots of other people, about how your deliberate efforts in this community, in this parish, have truly demonstrated the three characteristics of what it means to be a good shepherd. You know, first of all, you've shown wonderful, beautiful signs of laying down your life for God's people, for your people. 
when you received your assignment, you may not have known where this part of the Diocese of Pittsburgh was. And while it might have been the first time that you came here, very shortly you fell in love with them. And it's been very clear from the stories that we've been told that you have been laying down your life. Who could imagine a good Irishman like yourself teaching Spanish to grade school kids, huh? <laughs> Just a beautiful icon of, of what that means to lay down, to put aside all of those things that are comfortable for us to be there for others. And then second of all, that like Jesus, you have truly sought to know God's people in your own life. And how many stories we've heard about you going about to all the various sites of this parish, to all the various neighborhoods, as you've come to know people and remember the people that you've met. And because you're such a good storyteller, you could tell lots of stories, good stories, about the people of St. Andrew the Apostle Parish. And then the third element of being a good shepherd. To seek to share the love of God, not just with those people whom the world might consider faithful, those folks that come to church, those that are part of fundraisers, those who take prayer seriously, but you're there for all of those other people who might be struggling in their faith to know God. And one of the ways that that's been demonstrated is the ways you've sat on the porch with Father Jerry. You know, just to be there and just in the event that people are walking by and seeing the two of you sitting on the porch, it gives them an opportunity to maybe begin to open up about their struggles in life. And so my hope and prayer, and I'm thrilled to be able to be part of this ceremony today, my hope and prayer, dear Tom, is that uh, your gifts and your talents and especially your yes to the Lord today is not going to wane, but only become more enthusiastic. Because that's what we need. That's what the church needs. And that's what the world needs from the church. And so now, I hope you don't mind, but I want to share a few words now from the ritual with all of the people who are gathered here in person or those who are here virtually. My dear sisters and brothers, our brother Tom, here in the presence of the church, is being recommended to us and to you for admission as a candidate for holy orders. Christ gave this command. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Aware of the Lord's concern for his flock and realizing the needs of the church, our brother, dear Tom, considers himself ready to respond generously to the call of the Lord, trusting the Lord in whom he put places the hope of faithfully pursuing his vocation. He says with the prophet, here I am, send me. But the call of the Lord must be heard and understood by means of signs which reveal daily to the wise the will of God. Those whom God chooses to be shares in the ministerial priesthood of Christ, he prompts and helps with his grace. At the same time, he entrusts to us all of us, the faithful, the task of inquiring about the candidate's aptitude. Once they have been duly tested, we will call and ordain them, marking them with the singular seal of the Holy Spirit for the ministry of God and the church. For by holy orders, Tom will be deputed to continue the saving work of Christ which Jesus accomplished on this earth. Therefore, when the time comes for Tom to be associated with our ministry, he will serve the church and help build Christian communities by the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. And so now, dear Tom, 
we address these words to you who have already begun your formation. Through this formation, you will learn each day to live according to the gospel and to be strengthened in faith, hope, and charity. By practicing these virtues, you will grow in the spirit of prayer and in zeal to win all mankind for Christ. Compelled by the love of Christ and strengthened by the inner working of the Holy Spirit, you have arrived at the moment when you are to express openly your desire to be bound in holy orders for the service of God and mankind. This desire we shall receive with joy. From this day on, you must continue to cultivate more fully your vocation, using especially those means that can be offered to you as help and support by the church entrusted with this task. On the part of all of us here today, trusting in the Lord, we promise you that we will assist you with our love and with our prayers. Therefore, when you are called by name, come forward and declare your intention before the church assembled in this sacred place. Thomas Glenn Cadlick. My beloved son, the pastors and teachers in charge of your formation and others who know you have given a favorable account of you and we have full confidence in their testimony. In response to the Lord's call, do you resolve to complete your preparation so that in due time, through holy orders, you will be prepared to assume ministry within the church? Do you resolve to prepare yourself in mind and spirit to give faithful service to Christ the Lord and his body, the church? The church accepts your resolve with joy. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Amen.